Hi everyone, my name is Matt and you're watching the Syntax UK YouTube channel. Now today I'm going to be taking you through how to live stream with your RME interface and OBS on Windows. Now live streaming has always been really popular amongst the video game community, but with more and more of us stuck at home it's becoming a really great way for musicians and artists to continue playing live to their fans all across the world. Now one of the most popular programs for both Windows and Mac is the free OBS Open Broadcaster software and this is what we're going to be focusing on using in this tutorial. We're going to be using RME's Total Mix effects and making use of the loopback function. Now if you're not familiar with it, it essentially allows any of the audio from any particular output to be sent back into its corresponding input without the need for any cabling. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Windows Sound Settings. To do this, you can either use the search bar on the bottom left, or you can go across to the taskbar on the right hand side, choose the speaker icon, and by clicking that, find Open Sound Settings. And this is where you can choose your outputs for all your desktop audio, as well as the input for your microphone, etc. So here you can see I'm using MADI 3 and 4 for my output, so all of the software outputs like your browser, your DAW currently, will come through MADI 3 and 4. Now on the input, obviously this is where your microphone would go, so I'm using Analog 1, so you select Analog 1 and 2. Now you may encounter an issue where you don't see all of your I.O. on this list. So you want to go to your Fireface settings menu and then where WDM devices is just click configure. And then you'll have a checkbox there for all of your inputs. If you have an issue whereby you can only see analog 1 and 2 and analog 3 and 4 it's probably worth just resetting your interface and these should then pop up again. That may well happen as well in the sound settings. Again, just make sure you reset your interface and then that problem should be resolved. So now we're going to go into OBS and we're going to have a look at the settings menu. As you can see here on in the middle of the screen, we've got microphone one working already, but I'm just going to show you the rest of the settings. So we're going to go to the audio tab and here you get a list of all the inputs that you can select in OBS. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the desktop audio device. You'll remember from earlier in the video that set as MADI 3 and 4. So currently anything that's coming out of a browser, any kind of media player, iTunes, Spotify, that will come through MADI 3 and 4. Now we're also going to set a second mic auxiliary device and we're going to choose MADI 7 and 8 and this is where we're going to route our DAW to so that means you get an extra channel in OBS for your DAW and then that means you've got more control over the levels of the three things so just click apply and then click OK so there we go we've got three channels there so if we play some audio here turn it down a little bit make sure there's not too loud and then we go we've got some audio coming through the desktop audio channel on OBS. That's nice and easy. I'm just going to rename this to avoid any confusion. It's DAW. So we're just going to go into Ableton. Now Ableton's master output is set as 1 and 2 currently, so that will come through software playback channel A and 1 and 2 in Total Mix. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Total Mix and because we've selected the output MADI 7 and 8 what we're going to do is we're going to use loopback here which is a feature we've used before and we're going to go to MADI 7 and 8 and we're going to click loopback so that's looping back into input 7 and 8 and we just raise the fader for AM1 and 2 and we can see that the DAW is now coming through there on OBS so we've now got one channel for the mic, one channel for the DAW and then one channel for everything else, all your other desktop audio if you wanted to monitor the output of OBS, we can go into settings and then go to advanced and then in audio, you've got your audio monitoring device and we're going to set this to MADI 5 and 6 so that means it gets its own software playback channel. So if we go to Total Mix now, we'll see OBS coming through on MADI 5 and 6. 
And then finally, all I need to do is raise software playback channel five and six in my main output, which is my headphones. And there we go, I can hear OBS in my headphones. Another thing to note in OBS is that because your microphone input is stereo by default, you'll need to go to the advanced audio properties in OBS. So that's done by clicking the cog. You'll see mic one is already ticked as down mix to mono. If we untick that, you'll see that it comes through the left channel. Now, another thing on the monitoring is that all of these audio monitoring sections here, they'll all say monitor off. And if you want to hear that, you need to change it to monitor and output. And this is how the monitoring then is sent from OBS into that MADI channel five and six. So we can see that there. The issue with monitoring in OBS is that there will be some latency. So the easiest thing to do and the best thing to do, if especially if you're performing live, would be to monitor exclusively out of Total Mix and just use that monitoring section in OBS to check that the levels are correct, how you want everything. And obviously Total Mix gives you the full control of all of these so that you can hear your own mix, uh, your own monitoring mix to perform how you wish. And as I say, just use that five and six output that's coming out of OBS to check that the levels are correct and how you want them to sound to the people watching your stream. Now, obviously in Total Mix effects, depending on the interface that you have, the channel count that you get in Total Mix might be quite intense for what we're using it for. So it might be easier to just name all your channels, what you're using them for. So I'm changing the software playback channels to desktop, DAW, and then OBS just for that monitoring if you want to check what the level sounds like. And of course you can go into the options menu and the channel layout and get rid of all of the channels. You can hide them. You can hide all the channels that you don't need in this menu here. So we're going to hide all those inputs and also hide all of the playbacks and outputs too. Now by doing this, it will effectively make the Total Mix window a lot easier to manage on the fly, especially when you're doing something like a live stream and you just want to check levels. So here you go. All those inputs, outputs and software playback channels that we're not using are all gone and we're left exclusively with the channels that we need. Now to recall this at any time is really simple. Just go to File, Save Your Workspace and then at any time when you're doing a live stream, you can just recall these settings. That's it for this video on how to use your RME interface to live stream using OBS on Windows. If you're a Mac user, make sure that you check out our video on how to get started with OBS on Mac. And as always, please do make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel to see all our future content. Thanks very much guys, and we'll see you again next time.